boring bit where I say, if you're watching, you've got to click subscribe and uh, all that sort of stuff and hit the alerts too. So you know when these interviews are coming up. And if you're listening on uh, the podcast, welcome back. And we've got uh, we've got Martin and Peter from Crash Diet. Hey, guys. Hey. 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 What's up? <laughs> hey, good, good, good. How's, uh, how is it where you are? Is it, is it cold? Is it warm? It's is snowing it outside, actually. We have uh, in, like this much snow. <laughs> And this is a nice Australian. surprise this morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm Australian, as you can hear, and I, I can't get used to this being spring in, in, uh, in Europe. It's supposed to be, you know, the sunflowers are supposed to be, are supposed to be starting to warm up. So, um, yeah. guys, we're here to talk about your new album, Aut- Automaton. And um, uh, I'm going to start with, I said I wasn't going to ask any shit questions, but I am going to ask one shit question. <laughs> um, Automaton is like, obviously, a, um, a, um, a science fiction touchstone robots and stuff like that was that inspired by like were you watching westworld or why why automaton we were inspired by ourselves actually because we <laughs> kind of feel like we're this uh, robot like uh, humans you know uh we we've had a lot of uh, setbacks uh, during our career you know and um it just feels like we 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 never stop. We just continue, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. There's some lyrics there too about you know we die hard and we might have made the wrong choice, but it's our choice, you know. So yeah. I was going to ask you about in the third or second part of the interview about that. But mm-hmm. how much does your past kind of inform your songwriting and your approach to to your craft? It's it's hard to write about the future, so <laughs> I prefer writing about the past. Well, automatons, that's, that's, that's kind of <laughs> our way to get it out of our system, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and how does it kind of, um, again, with this album and the topics that you were looking at sort of discussing, what, what, what were the topics that got thrown up when you were, when you were, when you were writing these songs? Um, topics. I mean, we, we just write like a shitload of songs <laughs> and uh, pick out the 10 best or 11 best in this case. <laughs> mm. uh, so there's no like real theme other than every song has its own life, you know? Mm. So um, it's kind of just doing our thing, you know, as we've <laughs> always been doing. <laughs> and fellas, you, um, you signed with Golden Robot, which is an Aussie uh, mm-hmm. company yeah. um, during, how did that come about? Uh, because our, our last contract with um, Frontiers uh, it ended actually, so we we just shopped around to see what what we couldn't get. Like uh, shopped around for the best possible contract. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, it landed at Robot Records, Golden Robot. Yeah, yeah. And is is it twenty songs that you did during uh, COVID? Is it more that you actually? kind of had prepared for this record probably 30 all right okay (laughs) okay over what period of time you know like when did you start Uh, we started even before covid um just um i don't know why we started so early but i have no idea (laughs) um yeah we had too much time basically and that we wrote too many songs (laughs) (laughs) it was very difficult to choose um the final the, the final 11 songs but that's what you hear you know and yeah. we're very we're very proud of the album yeah yeah so you should be and were you sort of chomping at the bit to get it out as quickly as possible was it were you anxious because obviously a lot of music is coming out very quickly now isn't it you know yeah um, or was it was it you just wanted to get it out there um i guess we wanted to put it out uh to to um at, at the same time as this tour is starting yeah. you know because otherwise it would make make no sense to be on tour if you don't have an album out so we we've always been trying to sync that but it hasn't been easy mm. but that, i mean it that, was harder yeah. this time to uh, sync the album release with a tour <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i wonder uh, why <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, obviously happy with uh, the results you've even got. Now we can't yes. play this song, um, but I'll ask you about it. Powerline and ha- Michael Starr from Steel Panther getting involved mm-hmm. in that. I believe you. Ha- I don't think you've had a guest 
on a on 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 a on a track before. Um, so no, we haven't. Not a guest that. singer. We've had uh, so, Mick, Mick Mars, Mars on, of course, on of course, one yeah. album playing guitar on two songs. But mm. other than that, nothing. Yeah, really. And how did it happen, guys? Um, I mean, we met Steel Pander a few years back at a festival, and, and we're kind of kind of got along. They're really nice guys, and they they like our music. We like their music. And when at at the when we were in the studio doing this album, we kind of said like we should have a guest guest star on at least one song on on this new album it's just an idea that popped up and and what came to mind was steel pander and and um we just we just texted him like do you want to do you want a guest star on our album and he was like yeah dude let's do it <laughs> awesome um, well we can't listen to that song now so what can we listen to one of? Uh, can you suggest one of the first two singles that we can uh, we can listen to for the people listening, for the people watching? We're just going to keep talking. Yeah. Um, how about the single we dropped yesterday, together with it, whatever? A any story behind that one, guys? Um, well, it's obviously a song about our past, <laughs> mm. um, and it's it's kind of a tribute to to uh, all of the lineups, all of the singers, <laughs> so to speak uh in the past so that's really really what the video is all about too and and uh, i think the song is uh very uplifting and you know it reminds me of, of uh our first album actually okay welcome back to white line fever for those of you who are watching thanks for continuing to watch for those of you uh listening as i just said welcome back and uh, we've got crash diet with us uh, martin and peter guys um we touched in the first part of the interview about you know, your number of um, singers you've had and you know, obviously very different circumstances in each each case uh, with, with them leaving. Um, some bands don't survive changing singer once. Um, a, lot of no. fans, <laughs> a lot of fans tend to go with the singer. Um, we've just seen, I don't know if you're aware, with Choir Boys, you know, the English band, the Choir Boys, they've dispensed with Spike uh, and it's caused mm -hmm. lots of drama and they've just put out a statement, um, you know, talking about the reasons uh, why they did that. Um, what What is the... What is the secret to getting over the the changing a singer? You know, and 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 how is how is your situation kind of different to to other um, other bands? And and do you have fans who have sort of not followed you into the next singer? You know, they they get on social media and they they say, no, you change your singer, or we don't want to mm. stay with you. Yeah, I, I think we lose some and we yeah. win some more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but negative comments are of of course to be expected when you make such drastic changes yeah and um but i think we just we have to uh, renew ourselves yeah and start every reboot the band and yeah. start from scratch and like um i think we're really oh, i don't know what to say it's a it's like starting a new band every time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe other bands just continue like they did before, and but we always have like a new album out, you know. So I guess maybe that's why they continue to follow us. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> a lot of a lot of musicians talk about lead singer disease. You know that they're a different breed. Uh, not never heard of it. Else. <laughs> what don't know what, what, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what is lead? What is lead singer disease? I mean, you, you can you can you get like a a feel when when a singer's a bit unhappy that the shit's about to hit the fan. You've been you know, you've been through well in that situation, I guess, twice now. So, what what is it? What is it to people who are outside? What is it? What's different about about singers? They're just different. I wish I knew <laughs> what's uh, so different uh, <laughs> and why. <laughs> But yeah. I'm 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 as just as clueless as anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish I knew too. I think they have this certain persona that. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you want to stand in the middle of the yeah. stage. Yeah, that's true. Um, you need some sort of extra gene for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would hate that to take that 
leading role. Uh, so I, I guess it takes a special type of person to do that. Yeah, yeah. We know that obviously with the circumstances with losing your first singer that the band broke up for some time and, and wasn't going to continue. Does that, has that ever crossed your mind with the, the, the subsequent two departures? Did you ever think, well, if either of those um, departures ever made you think that the future of the band was in jeopardy? I think if we would have broken up, we would still continue in some form. Yes. To get the three of us, you know, yes. uh, it's just, we just chose to keep the name yeah um but i think we are That's right we became a new band right after dave you know anyway mm. so let's not get too, <laughs> too hooked up on 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 the name <laughs> <laughs> so you feel like you're actually sort of been almost what four different bands really is that the way you i feel? would say so yeah. yeah yeah actually yeah and how would you describe the difference between musically between the difference between the four um, different bands because generally speaking the, the whole sound has like evolved hasn't it for the whole yeah. scene that you're from this is the new crash diet album it's like not crash diet your crash diet mm -hmm. <laughs> the new reckless love album it's so mm -hmm. different to what they were like back then as well i mean yeah. how how would if you could sum up the evolution between the across the those years how would you kind of sum it i up? think it's easier for a fan to to sum up that but <laughs> i mean we always try to evolve on every record because mm. That's kind of what makes it fun, too. Mm. And I and that's the kind of bands that I think are interesting. Mm. You know, bands like, I mean, how many dis different genres haven't Kiss done on <laughs> different <laughs> records? You know, mm. and even Motley Crue, yeah, yeah, changed on every record. Yeah, and I think that's it keeps it in interesting. You yeah. know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, look at Alice Cooper. I mean, Alice Cooper is not yeah. one type yeah. of music at all, is it? It's just the guy and the yeah. theatrical yeah. rock thing and the musically it's just anything it could be anything. yeah you know? exactly. so, uh, guys thanks for joining us really uh, appreciate uh your time we in the last part of the interview we, we sort of touched on the the scene that you're from you know which is which is um you know sweet from sweden but generally that scandinavian um a metal thing um was sort of holding the torch when it was kind of dying um, everywhere else in the world and i i, all, I, I do like to ask people why why did it grow? Why did it happen then and there? Why? And 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 what is the health of it now? And how has it changed? Like, why were you into this music? And why did it did it become so successful that you you broke overseas? You know, like, uh, have you got a theory about the about the whole genesis of the <laughs> of the of the scene? You mean why it was like kind of reborn and the yeah yeah early... exactly when when people elsewhere you know the, the weren't listening to that music yeah. you know, in, the, in the new when the break the turn of the century and onwards and you know the last twenty years but but in Scandinavia kind of the the flag kept flying well, why is that I mean when we first got in contact with a record company like two thousand four maybe they were like comparing us to this band the darkness oh, yeah. and yeah, they were yeah. pretty pretty big back then so i don't know if they have something to do with it um but yeah, i mean true. there wasn't much of a scene when we were starting out we were like it was us and like one other band yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah kind yeah. of uh and we just went all in and like we could take the subway and we were all styled up and even if we were going to McDonald's, you know, <laughs> we just wanted to be seen. Um, and then it, uh, it ended up um, a record company calling us and, and signing us. Mm. I spoke to Danny yeah. Rexon and he, said the, he named the darkness as well. The dark Justin Hawkins has got, well, he's, he, uh, you know, it sounds like people owe him a bit of a debt of gratitude. The darkness ten, uh, helped yeah. give, give a, a lot of bands a start you know yeah i think so too i mean uh, at least bands was some sort of imaginary you know yeah, yeah. Um, yes because before that uh it was pretty i guess it was pretty boring what i can recall yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like no one dressed up no one did their hair no no one no it was, stuff. It was all, all about like uh metal bands you know it's it it, it was just <laughs> pressing overall i would say 
yeah i mean yeah. i before crashed i i was in a garage band kind of type kind of band and that was a lot of, there were a lot of those bands yeah kind of like helicopters uh i i love helicopters but there was a lot of those bands back mm. in in those days but no one really dressed up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> hit yeah. the stage exactly <laughs> and what was it like when you went to the states and met some of the i guess they might have been your heroes you mentioned mick mars earlier um were mm. they were they kind of uh supportive or that you know or were they or you know were they surprised that you were still that this music was still popular in some part of the world or what was a what sort of reaction did you get um do you mean when we toured in the u.s yeah 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 when you met these uh, guys you know we were we, we, we well we didn't meet our idols there yeah. uh we met our fans there <laughs> <laughs> that we didn't know of but i mean when when i met mick mars he flew over to sweden actually to write with other people so i got the opportunity to write a few tunes with him uh but uh, by then, I mean, Motley Crue was huge again. This was like, it wasn't yeah. like 2007, I think. So, yeah. But, and what yeah. sort of age group are your fans? Like, do you, I've got old, you got old, crusty people like me, and I suppose <laughs> yeah. uh, young, young, um, pretty young people as well. And has that changed over the years? Have you seen the demographic? Now we change? haven't played for such a long time. Yeah, so, we're... <laughs> <laughs> But it's a different from um, what different. It's so different depending on where you're in, which con which country yeah, you're true. in. You know, mm. uh, I guess they're pretty young mostly. Yeah. You know, um, fans who like to dress up as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and um, we yeah. we had so we had a question on the Facebook page on Hot Metal um, about Australian dates. You only recently uh, postponed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trip. What can you talk, talk about that a little bit? Um, you know, uh, I don't know what what happened, but but um, it's just too difficult to get get inside Australia, you know. And I guess that's why they postponed it. And we're you know, we're just waiting for new dates to come up so we can so we can do that, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So you have a hole in your schedule where you can get down there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and we have the whole whole year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> and we're just waiting for the dates. Yeah. <laughs> and guys, there's been before you go, there's been a lot of cross pollination between bands in, in your part of the world. And I noticed like on your bios and stuff like that, you don't mention Tobias uh, and Ghost and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, you don't want to be mm. um, selling yourself uh, based on that. And I appreciate that. Um, could you, when that band first came out, did you go, wow, that's that's what he was like? Was that gestating when you when you knew him, when he was in your band? Do you think he was envisag envisaging that band? Or was it, were you surprised when you saw it or were you like, of course he's gonna do that? Uh, I didn't know the guy. I don't know him today All either. Right. Um, we're, we're, we're like the guys that replaced yeah. that All right. and that lineup lasted for just a few months before yeah. they kind of broke up wow uh, and then the rest yeah dave contacted peter and peter brought me along and then eric came along you know right it happened right. really fast that change so we've always seen the you know the rest of sleaze lineup as as the first lineup yeah, that's yeah. when we started releasing music, you know, like a completely different band, like you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are they? How big are they? I mean, where you are? Like, I mean, are they like at the top? Oh, they're of huge. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. pretty huge. And and but very different, very very different music, isn't it? You know, are you guys into yeah, that, yeah. or are you, are you are you? Is it a bit? Is it a bit dark for you guys, or are you, no, do you no, like no. it? I love it. Yeah, I love Ghost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we love them both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they're I, great. Mm. In and, and finally, just, they do. Sorry, mm. sorry. Yeah, I, I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Talking over the top of you. I'll be quiet. You can talk. Yeah. Sorry. I'm no, no, no. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, what do you hope before we go, Automaton? What do you, what are your aspirations for it? Like, what is in 2022? What is a successful record for for a rock band? What what do you what do you want out of it? <laughs> to get to play. Uh, yeah. Live. 
I think it's 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 uh, it's our our targets at the moment. <laughs> yeah, just get the word out there that we're we have a new album out yeah. soon and just tour as much as possible. Yeah. I guess that's the main focus. <clears throat> Guys, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you to the people who are watching and the people who. Are-